Russia will fly its own flag at the 2018 winter closing ceremonies. Moscow had asked the International Olympics Committee to allow athletes to march under their own flag at the closing ceremonies at the Olympics. But after a four-hour meeting, IOC officials were unable to reach a decision. They'll meet again on Sunday. Russian athletes have been competing under a neutral flag after their country was banned over that doping scandal. For more about the Olympics, we're going to go to Jim Walsh in Boston. He is with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Security Studies program. Hi there, Jim. Nice to see you. Good to see you again. At the Olympics this year, one of the events that made its debut, the mixed doubles curling. It sparked a lot of curiosity among those uh, about, about you know, what's behind this event. Tell us uh, more about this event and, and some of the other events at the Olympics um, that are really coming into the spotlight. Well, you know, I actually am a big fan of curling. Personally, I've been one for years. I don't know if you've ever played shuffleboard where you slide something down and it takes real concentration and sort of a relaxed and peaceful mind and skill. A and it's, uh, it's been rising in popularity in the last several years, so much so that we now have new players on the international scene. The U.S. has, uh, you know, obviously the men's team won the gold. And I think just in general, there's been a, a surge in interest uh, in it. And certainly this new result where you have someone new winning, that will add even more uh, uh, attention and a spotlight and mm -hmm. we'll see more competitors, I think. Let's talk about uh, the focus on Asia and the fact that only four previous Olympics were held in Asia, but this is the first of three in a, in a row. We have Tokyo and Beijing next. Why is this? Well, I think it's, a, it's a, obviously a combination of factors. Uh, part of it is that we have a rising Asia. Asia is more important in the world, uh, both economically and politically and militarily. And plus, you know, uh, past a certain point, there are only cities of a certain size or countries of a certain size that can really afford to make the capital investments necessary to be able to host an, an Olympics. How and so you have some wealthy cities in Asia that are able to do that. How successful have these games been in terms of, you know, money, actually, for South Korea? Well, I think they've been successful, you know, on a number of levels. Yes, you've heard, as you always do with any Olympics, you hear criticism. People are wondering about empty seats and that sort of thing. But I think the, the impression, and certainly judging by the media coverage, I think it came off very well for the South Koreans. The uh, ceremonies were impressive. Uh, people were wowed by them. I think the politics of it, that uh, this was a victory for President Moon, who was able to do some diplomacy and sort of turn the tension down on the North Korean-South Korean conflict. I also think the, the North Koreans benefited from it. They were able to come out and be treated as a normal country, which they're trying to do as they try to beat sanctions. So I thought there were a lot of winners, obviously, picking up gold medals, but countries, there were winners as well. All right, tell us, um, what about the time difference? It didn't affect me that much as I was watching, but what about in other parts of the world? Well, I haven't seen those numbers, but I suspect that it did uh, affect it somewhat. Uh, Why is that? You know, uh, well, because people like to see events live. Right. And uh, some t sometimes also, if you are waiting to hear the results of an event that has already happened and your child tells you or you happen to see it on the TV screen when you were trying to keep yourself uh, from not knowing, then that's sort of, you get spoilers that way. Right. But you know, we live in a, in, a, in a world in which people are downloading, you know, where time is less of an issue, where people are downloading to DVRs mm -hmm. or to other devices, you know, other types of devices. So I think that's less of an issue over time. All right, Jim Walsh, always great to see you. Thank you, live in Boston.